tap on the more uh, button. Do you, see, do you see what I'm seeing? All right, it says recording now. Yay. Hey, congratulations. Now you can start the meeting, right, Piper? So now I guess we'll officially start the meeting. There you go, you're recording. So we're recording. <laughs> And I actually wrote it down to spotlight the demo, Mr. Piper. All right. <laughs> since since whoever, and I don't know if any of you guys watched the, the video from the last, uh, I guess it was the, the workshop, I forgot to spotlight myself when I did the demo. So all you guys are a little thumbnail of me doing the demo for that Saturday. So and just, just so you know, the reason that none of us noticed it because Ralph said nobody said anything is because when I watch it, I go to speaker view. So when you're watching speaker view, you saw Ralph do the demo. So you wouldn't think to say, hey, are you recording? So that's why we didn't catch it. But I guess no one yep. else. So, all right, so uh, so we don't have any, any guest guests, just members tonight so far, maybe we'll, Maybe some people will show up, hard to say. Um, the usual stuff with the AAW and, and uh, I have not gotten any gift certificates yet from Craft Supply. So uh, I think this week I will contact them. I don't wanna be pushy about it, but we're almost out. Uh, I did get an email today uh, as far as events. I got an email today from Michelle Street, who is the person that runs the Daring Seafood Festival. And the seafood festival has been postponed hmm. and has been rescheduled tentatively for October 24th of 2021. Okay, they had originally scheduled it for the regular date in March, but due to the increase in the Rona and I guess this new strain, uh, they have decided to put a shit back to October of 2021. We'll keep everybody informed. And if I hear anything about any of the other events that we normally go to, of course, you'll be notified by email or at the meeting or both. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. Um, anybody, th anybody got anything they want to add or any Ralph, new business? There, there's a, um, oh, what's her name? Dixie, Dixie, what the Dixie Carver? Biggs. Yes, is I think tomorrow at um, I, I sent I sent emails to everybody about those events for Dixie okay. Big and uh, uh, the other one. Uh, oh yes, the she used to be the editor. Um, yes, yes, B Betty Scarpino. Yes, yes, I sent uh, when I get those, I forward them to everybody, uh, pretty much, um, depending on what they are. And uh, I've been, I don't know, I know you AAW members are getting the emails from the AAW, but the non members, um, I don't know how much when I forward those to you, I don't know how much of those you can see or if they're, if they're locked out, uh, you know, to members only. But, uh, you know, they, there's a lot of good information and it's, it's well worth the uh, $60 membership. For, for the year, um, you know, between the information they send out by email and the magazine that they send out. Uh, and hopefully if uh, the, the, the live in-person symposium every year, which of course last year they didn't have, it was the virtual, which I thought was pretty good, especially for the price. Um, you know, at this point, they're planning to go ahead with the live symposium. Uh, whether it's really going to happen, it's hard to say. You know, this this uh, virus thing is just day by day things change. So uh, you know, and that's the same situation with our with meeting at the school. 
Um, I'm going to be contacting our contact, our new contact uh, here this week just to touch base with them. But the way things are going, uh, I, I don't see us getting back into school anytime soon at all. Um, so what's the, what's the plans, you know, with you guys with school or do you even know? We've been told nothing. Okay. Yeah, pretty I much. I mean, we're the email. last rumors I heard were, I mean, I'm in school already and all right. the teachers are, are going to school. La the rumors in terms of school have been, the big ones have been that it looks like there's a chance they might tell all kids to start going to school in February. Um, and in terms of COVID, I mean, we're, we're considered essential workers, but nobody has told me anything yet, nor any teacher is talking about vaccinations and stuff like that. Okay. So, well, I just saw, I, I didn't have a chance to read it. I just got an email that, uh, from the Miami Herald and it sounds like, uh, Carvalho's when something in there is going to be a big shakeup at the school, at the school system. The people yeah. I just got an email. I just got a uh, text that Baptist Hospital is going to launch online registration um, yes. this Next Friday. Week. This Friday. Is it Friday? Okay, because I was at, at the, we were at the uh, cardiologist today and he said it would be soon that Baptist was going to be, uh, you know, having, having, uh, the vaccinations. Yeah. Uh, so that is all I know about uh, that. Yeah, the, in terms of what Carvalho, from what I've heard about Carvalho, the rumors are February, March, starting all starting all kids kids all kids go to school again because he's saying the numbers are low. Right. In terms of of, of attendance. Uh, no, no. In terms of. Um, so the school uses this thing called iReady to track how well the kids are improving or not improving. And apparently those numbers are really low. So he wants the kids back at school. He says that the regression of education is too much. That's the last rumor. Okay, well, I'll, we'll see. Yeah. Ralph, Ralph, I got something to share on COVID. Yeah. There, there's a treatment now that no one tells you about, but I happen to go to Baptist. It's a antibody therapy for anyone in the high risk, over 65, have asthma, have any of the high risk things. That knocked mine out in like six hours. This really? Week. Yeah. What is it, bleach? No, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it is. Yeah. My doctor told me it's Sunlight. the treatment that Trump got. It's uh, some kind of a synthetic antibodies that don't let the virus replicate in your body. It's called BAMLA, B-A-M-L-A. -A. You can look it up online, but it was amazing. I was with coughing and fevers and feeling like shit. I went in there, they ran an IV in, they monitored me for a couple hours after to make sure I didn't have a reaction. Susie and I both had it and had the treatment and like the next day we felt good. It was amazing. Is it a shot? It's an IV. IV, oh. Yeah, but it's like a 500 milliliters they run in and then they run some saline behind it to make sure they got every bit of the other stuff. What's the name of it again? B-A-M-L-A. -A. I got my shot at uh, Jackson South today. Took I was in and out in 50 minutes. They're going to open it up again next week. Yeah. Now I'm on the bottom of the list for the shot since I've had it. <laughs> Does ever anybody else lose their picture? I've got it scheduling made easy somehow. <laughs> what? I don't know, did anybody else get a text message from Baptist right now? Yes. Because I, I just got one yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little freaky that we're talking about it. Yeah, and there it is. It. I, I just got it. That's why I I'm just saying. got it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. This Friday, January 8th. Please visit, please visit baptisthealth.net vaccine slash vaccine to schedule. No way. How scary. Yep. So, anyways, so who said that? Baptist, who, what are the lotto numbers? 
Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's funny is they don't tell you about this treatment. I, my son-in-law was the one that first brought it here. And when he went, he's on a, an arthritis drug, Remicade, that killed his immune system. So urgent care told him about it. And he can, got you, his. can you tell my wife about this, the, um, what you had? Okay. It's called BAMLA. It's a synthetic antibody, and it knocked the, the thing out in a day. The monoclonal antibodies? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I did that story on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. It, there's two, Regeneron and some other yeah. company. That... But you have Please, to be high Clorox risk. Clorox works good. No, Clorox, yeah. You have Clorox, to be 65 Clorox and, and a, UV, oh, a UV light bulb fix you right up. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, uh, Ralph, Ralph. Again, I'm asking... All of a sudden, my main screen says scheduling made easy, make it fast, add we Zoom. See, we see you fine. Is, we, huh? we see you fine. You look, you look good. I got an email from Domino's Pizza. There you go. <laughs> Ralph, just one more thing to add, Ralph, if you would, in case anyone wasn't aware, but the reason that uh, Ralph's talking about Deering Estates is when they canceled it last year, uh, the decision was made by Ralph and the board to, instead of getting a refund, is to put that money forward to whenever they have the seafood festival again. So whenever they have it, we're paid up. Yes, we are paid. So that's a given. We're we're there no matter when they have it. Right. We're in. Yep. So uh, right. I guess with, with that, if nobody's got anything else. To, well, how uh, about a treasure report? We haven't had treasure report in a while. A treasure report. For the members, that is, David. Year end, we have $3,917.71 in the bank. We have a payment due for the insurance uh, at the beginning of February of $629.63. And we have actually 18 members that still need to renew. Uh, other than that, everybody has been submitting payments, either Zelle, which we set up recently, uh, a couple PayPals, uh, and a uh, and checks, and it's all worked well. We got mobile deposit. I don't need to go to the bank to make those deposits. Uh, the only one that I had to, to actually go to the bank was uh, a, what was it, a, a money purchase order. Uh, so whoever gave me a, a money money order, uh, I needed to go to the bank for that, but that's no big deal. And uh, other than that, we we should be good. We should be. Uh, we just need those payments in so that we can get everybody renewed and keep everybody on the list. Could, could you re repeat the amount again, David, so I get it right for the minutes? Uh, the Balance is three thousand nine hundred seventeen dollars and seventy one cents. All that money. I guess you haven't bought your new lathe yet. <laughs> hey, hey! Don't be telling that. No, he wasn't supposed to know that. <laughs> so, on that note, I will turn this over to Igor. Are you ready? I'm ready if you guys are ready. Okay. So let me know. Oh, now where the hell did you go? You're way over neck. Like jumping around on me. Okay. Go You're on. on. All right. Hi again, everybody. I haven't seen you all in a couple of years, but I used to be a member of your club. And I see some new faces. I see some faces I recognize. So let's get something made today. I'm going to show you how I make a train whistle. It's a cool toy for kids. They're going to love it. You're going to hate it because it makes a lot of noise. And it is fun to make. Um, Ralph sent you guys a set of drawings that I made. 
So you can follow it step by step. It's real simple to make. There's a couple of tricks I'm going to show you. And that's really all I'm going to try to do the best that I can to show you the tricks that I use. So let's dive right in. Oh, before we start, what are we going to need? We're going to need a piece of wood, two by two square, about six inches long. It's pretty important to try to keep this as square as possible. It makes it easier to work with if the blank is actually truly square. It doesn't have to be, but it just makes it easier. And we're gonna need another little block, something like a two by two by two to make the end cap out of. End cap has to be made out of different, it doesn't have to be made out of different wood, it's just gotta be a different piece. I like to make them contrasting because I think it looks nicer when they two different colors. But you can embellish it and make this thing as pretty as you like, however you like. So we're going to go to the page one of our drawing and we're going to work on the main body of the actual whistle. Uh, can you guys see this real good or no? That's what is good there, like? yeah. Mike. I'm sorry? What does the whistle sound like? Oh, okay. Hang on. There you go. Somebody being on already. How about that? <laughs> David, is that you? That was that was me. Nope. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> this thing has four different air holes. It's basically four whistles combined into one. And the reason why it's done, uh, four holes are in a different depth and the, the depth, it makes a different tone. So you can actually, tune this as a musical instrument if you have the ear for it, which I don't, but you could by controlling the depth of those holes. Now, what I found the best, if you make those holes half an inch apart from one to the next, it just makes it sound pretty decent. So I'm going to start with a three inch hole. I'm going to make a three and a half inch hole and I'm going to go to a four inch hole and a four and a half inch hole. And I use a three eighths diameter drill bit, which looks like that. I found this in Lowe's. It's the only one that allows me to drill four inch holes without doing any kind of other fun things to it. And since I don't have a drill press big enough to do it, I'm gonna drill those holes on a lathe. And I'm gonna teach you guys how to drill offset holes on a lathe without changing your chuck. So let me put my drill bit in my tail stock. And I'm move the tail stuck over so you guys can see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my depth. I found an Amazon blue tape, which is exactly half inch wide, which allows me to set up four different flags for four different uh, depths. And I can do this in all in one time. I'm going to get a little piece of it. Actually, I'm gonna need four little pieces of it. And I'm gonna set up my first hole at the three inch depth. So my next hole is three and a half inches depth. Since my tape is half inch, I'll go right behind it and I'll put my second flag. That, the next one's gonna give me a four inch hole. And the last one is gonna give me a four and a half inch hole. So as I drill a hole, I'll remove a flag and I'll drill the next hole. <clears throat> now, let's see where we're gonna mark and how we're gonna mount this piece on the lathe. Before we go, I'm gonna mark the center of my piece. We're gonna need it for the future when we put a tail stuck on it. It's not quite square, but it'll work. Now, if you guys look at the drawing, the whole locations are from the center of the piece. You guys can't see. We go from the center of the piece, half inch down, half inch over, half inch up, and half inch 
to the right. So it's half inch away. I'm gonna set my square to a half inch and I'm gonna mark where my holes are supposed to go. Those marks are not necessary. I like to put them there just to kind of make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but you really don't need them. Now, drill some holes. If I were to put this block into my chuck, I get a hole in the middle. I don't need a hole in the middle. I need to offset the hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove one jaw out of my chuck. And I'm gonna use only three. Hmm. Now I'm gonna use my bottom. The two side ones are gonna clamp the piece in place. Since we're only drilling, we're not gonna turn like this. It's pretty safe because if you have a drill bit into the wood, but now I have to offset it a little bit. And what I found a piece of <clears throat> three eighths of anything, this just happens to be a piece of aluminum that I have laying around, works quite well. So we lay this on the bottom. We put our wood right next to it and we tighten the chuck. Make sure you tighten them pretty good. This tip right here is worth the price of admission. That's right. So this gives you an off-centered hole right at the line. Uh, let me move the camera a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, right at the line we marked and it's gonna spin just like this. <laughs> And we're gonna do this on three, all four faces by rotating the block. <coughs> so, let's get some drilling going. Turn on my lathe. Put my safety glasses on. I'm at right now about 800 RPM. I'm gonna bring it down to about 750. Lock my tail stuck in place. And this will drill really, really easy. Get it going till you hit your first five. Back it right up. We got a whole drill. So now what we do is we remove that flag that we had and we already set up for the depth of the net hole. Let's reposition our piece. And it's really irrelevant in which sequence you do them in, as long as the four holes are different. I'm gonna turn my piece 90 degrees, put my little block back in place, lock everything up again. Drill a second hole. There we go. Up the lake, take out a little flag. And we do this two more times. Now, if you guys have any questions, if you guys want to ask something, something you don't like, please stop me. Oh, we already done that one.
Ah, no, güey. ¿Eh? With the last one done, we're going to be done with drilling. We can continue with more fun stuff. And the last one. Okay. That's a three eighths drill bit. Three eighths drill bit, yes. Take your drill bit out so you don't hit yourself on it. Only the drill bits in the tail stock, they do hurt. Hit your elbows with them, it's not fun. All right. So, what we have now is our block with all our holes drilled in it. Time to put your chunk back together because we're going to continue working on it. We're going to need a full face of the chuck. All right. So. We're done with the first step. Let's go see what we have to do next. Okay, for the second step, we actually have to shape the body a little bit and create a 45 degree, not necessarily have to be a 45 degree, a recess that goes in to about half the depth of those holes. This is what's gonna let the air out and this is what's actually gonna make the sound. The only important thing about it, it's gotta be five eighths from the top of the ed edge from, from here to where it starts, it's gotta be five eighths of an inch. So let's put this guy back in the chuck. My key. Now for this exercise, I like to use my tail stock because we're actually gonna be turning. Safety first, right? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my tool rest up and I'm going to make about half of this thing round. I'm not going to round off the whole thing because we're going to need the square to index one more time. It's up a bit. I'm going to use my one inch roughing gouge and I'm going to bring my speed up a little bit since we have the tail stuck on now. It's a little bit more safe. I'll go to about The outside diameter is not really important at all. Um, we want to make sure we knock off all the flat spots from the square. So mm -hmm. let, let me let me do a little bit more because there's a couple of spots still left in it. 
Let me get this thing round round. We should be pretty good. Nope, a little more. There we go. That looks good. Okay. So our next step is we got to Mark off our five eighths dimension. You can use a caliper, you can use the ruler, you can use tape measurement, I don't care what you do. Give yourself a five eighths dimension. So I'm gonna grab my parting tool. And I'm gonna cut with my tool being on the side closer to your uh, headstock without touching this 5 eighths. This 5 eighths, uh, the space that we just marked off should be the way it is. And I'm gonna go inside this material until I start to see the hole that we drilled from the front side. Check a little more. There you go. I don't know, can you guys see this? It's just barely starting to break off. And I'm gonna stop with my parting tool right there. I'm gonna switch over to my Ball gouge. I like to use a ball gouge. You guys, whatever tool is more comfortable for you, it's not that big of a deal. And I'm gonna create a little case. So this is the final result. It's really pretty much done. What you want to be able to see, let me see if I can get you guys a little closer. It's half of the hole that we drilled is to be exposed. Can you guys see it? I'll take that as a yes. So right now it's a good time to also clean up a little shavings or, or hairs you have inside those little holes because they will create an obstruction and it's going to prevent the air to come out the way it's supposed to come out and therefore it's not going to sound the way it's supposed to sound. I, I like to use a real little razor blade and just knock those hairs off a little bit. Then when I make them, for me, I'll use a little piece of sandpaper and a little quarter inch dowel and really get in there and clean all those guys up. I'm not going to waste my time with this right now because, frankly, <clears throat> it'll be just fine. All right. So, oh, I'm sorry. Almost forgot a very important step. We got to glue in our top piece to this. So if you look real close, there's a little step that we have to create about an eighth of an inch deep, uh, really irrelevant the diameter, but when we're gonna match it, our other piece, that little step is gonna help us center it. So I'm gonna go back to my parting tool. I'm just gonna touch it a little bit. A 
little bit, just like this. All right. So we can take this off the chuck because our next piece we're gonna work on, well, actually, you know what? Let's put the reefs in there. So I'm gonna leave it on the chuck, but I'm, I gotta take off the chuck to show you guys the next step. Take your tail stuck out, you're not gonna need it anymore, but you bump into it with your elbow, it's not gonna be fun. Okay, so for the next step, we have to create a little reefs that we're gonna glue inside those holes, which is basically a piece of 3 8 doll, since we already drilled a 3 8 hole, you can make them yourself out of whatever wood you like. I buy those things in, in Lowe's, I'm sorry. They come like a three foot length for a buck 75. And they're made out of oak, so they work really well because the oak, oak is pretty moisture resistant. But we do have to grind a flat spot to it. You guys got an orbital grinder. You guys want to put a piece of sandpaper by hand, however you like, but I'm going to show you how I do it. <clears throat> So what I got is a piece of sandpaper glued onto a face plate. And I use my lathe as my grinder. Now the last demo I did, I took this little piece and I held it with my fingers and I got yelled at because it's not safe. And I was told that I need to come up with the fixture and do this <laughs> in a safer manner. So I did. Take a piece of wood, drill yourself a 3 8 hole, don't not all the way through and stop it somehow. Doesn't matter really where. Then put it on your table saw, on your bench saw, on your hand saw, and cut off some of it, leaving you an opal hole like this. So now what we do is we put our dowel in it and we grind off what's sticking up. So you don't have to hold it with your fingers. It's safe and they all come out the same. Good job. Thank you. I, I actually made some, not the train whistle, but I made some single whistles and I actually split the dowels with the bandsaw. Yeah, but you know, it's also the same problem. You're getting your fingers too close to the blade. Oh no, I, I use a foot long piece. Okay. And, and you know, cut a couple of inches and then cut them off to the length you need. Yeah, but this way, you know, this works yeah, really easy a, to make. That's an excellent way to do it right there. And it's safe and, you know, it's a piece of wood. We got that. So, we put it on the grinder. Grind it till it's flat. A little more. Perfect. And we're going to make three more, just like it. That's it. Simple as that. This thing worked really well. Let me get rid of my landing block. We're going to put the chuck back and we're gonna glue those pieces in place. Put the two rest out of the way. Okay, 
Now, gluing those little ribs back into place, well, not back in place, in, in place where they belong. You want your flat side that you just ground to face the flat side that is still remain. And this is one of the bigger reasons why I like to leave this flat spot and turn this when it's all complete and glued up. Now you also want to get them in about as to the depth of this face. And now these things right now will actually sound. You put air in them and it'll make sound. So you want to check them before you actually glue them and controlling your depth, you can actually change the sound. Flavor them a little bit. Maybe too much air out of the compressor. Try it just like this. Doesn't want to sound, so we change the read. Okay, if you over grind them a little bit and they are a little bit too flat, they're not going to sound like anything. There we go. So the gluing process is real simple. I use super glue. Super glue holds down to moisture pretty well. Put a dab of glue in there. Put a little bit of activator on the actual doll. That's really all it takes. That's it. Do that three more times. And we can clean up the face and move on to the next step. How long are those dowels? I usually make them about an inch long. They don't have to be this long, but it's easier to work with and hold on to them because then we cover off everything that's sticking out. Everything's on the drawings that I sent you guys that Ralph forwarded to all of you. We're gonna call this good for the demo purposes. All right, so once you use loose sets, get a little saw, cut those off. Don't try to turn them off, they will break. So now it's time to clean up this space and put finish on it. I'm not gonna do the finish for the demo, but once you glue the other piece, you can't get to the inside of this anymore. So this face should be finished at this stage. Now you do wanna use some kind of food safe finish. There's plenty of those out there. And you also wanna make sure that the finish you use is moisture resistant. I use uh, for those things, Butcher block conditioner. It works real well. It has a bunch of mineral oil in it, so it's food safe. It's also got the beeswax in it, so it keeps the moisture away pretty well. So let me get my bulk gouge. Turn this guy up. 750 RPM. And all I want to do is just hide my space. Get rid of all this not this. That's about it, all it takes. I'm gonna grab a piece of sandpaper. Now it's usually go through all my sandings, but in this case. 150 will work just fine. All 
I like for this small things like this. I like to use my sanding tacos. I don't know if you guys ever seen those before. Basically, a piece of Velcro. For small things like this, where you don't want to hold this with your fingers, those things work amazing. And you just stick a piece of five-inch paper on it, and you're good to go. Now, after sanding and finish, all of our rib holes where the air is supposed to go in got closed up with dust. But right now, it's a good time to grab your compressor, toothpick, whatever you have. And from the inside of the hole, make sure the holes are opened up. Get all that feet, all that dust blown out of there. So now what we got is you can actually see those little half moons where the air is going to enter into the whistle itself, except for this one. Let's see if we can grab something pointy and get that little chip out of there. There we go. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this piece. You wanna finish turning this, making this round, put any kind of embellishments on it, make this as pretty as you want, sand it, finish it. We're done with this piece. I'm gonna leave it at this stage because the last thing you guys wanna see is sending, right? All right, so now go back to our drawing and we're gonna work on our mouthpiece. The mouthpiece is nothing but an end cap with a cavity, hollow cavity on the inside and a little quarter inch hole drilled through the middle of it where you blow the air through it and the, this little cavity will push the air into every four, one of those four holes. Since we put a tenon on this side, we're gonna put a little recess so they match and we center and we're gonna turn it, we're gonna finish it and we're gonna glue it up. So that sounds like a plan, right? I'll take that as a yes. 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 Okay, okay. <laughs> you guys being in a quiet bunch today. I just want to thank you for showing me something better than Ralph would normally do. Oh, come on. You can't do that. Ralph shows good stuff. Ah! Okay, so what I, I usually like to do is I take my calipers, I set up my dimension for the tenon that I need to have. I will transfer this to my workpiece. Draw myself a pencil line. And this will get me pretty close. It's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna be pretty close. So I'm gonna start with my parting tool. And hold on, where you guys are? You can't see much of anything I do. Position a little bit. Whoops. Bear with me for a second, I'm losing my camera. Mount all of a sudden decided to fall off. There we go. There we go. All right. I'm going to start with my parting tool and I'm going to cut a little bit to the outside of that line. And I just want to get it in there and make sure. I'm on the right path and I'm not cutting too much of my material. Just a little bit. I still have my caliper set to my width. And I'm perfect right where I was supposed to be. Well, actually, you know what? I just screwed this up. I need to cut this on the inside of the line, not on the outside of the line. I wasn't going to say anything. Why not? 
You were going to let me go and make this thing twice bigger than it was supposed to be. Well, you can always turn it around and use the other side. Yeah, I, I, I got another block. It's okay. But you're going to let me embarrass myself. Okay, that's fine. That's why these are called real live demonstrations. I'm sorry? Real live demonstrations. We also for right. a while. I don't mind them. So let's see. Okay, this will work just fine. So now I have established somewhat of the space I need to be working with. I'm gonna go a little deeper. I'm gonna switch to my bone gouge and we're gonna hollow this out a little bit. Uh, this 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 cavity don't have to be real big or real deep. You just gotta be there. All the, the purpose for it is just to push the air to all four holes. I'm gonna grab my little half inch scraper and finish this off a little bit, make it a little prettier. This will work just perfect. Clean up the face. And we go back to our parting tool. And now is the time where we want to make sure those things align. Just keep on checking yourself. Doesn't have to be a super precision finish. Fit, I mean. But it's nice when things do fit. Just a little bit more and we'll be done. Now we need to drill a quarter of an inch hole all the way through this piece. I'm gonna grab my quarter inch drill bit. And my tail stock. And I'm gonna drill this hole all the way through. When you're drilling small holes all the way through, it's fine, just be careful, make sure that your uh, chuck has the clearance for your drill bits to go all the way through. Those drill bits will not drill through metal. Believe me, I've tried. Tail stock, safety first. Let's get this piece out of here. I'm going to show you what we accomplished. You guys see? Yeah. Okay. 
now is the good time to sand it, finish it, because once we glue it, there's no going back. Now I haven't turned the outside of this because it's pretty small, it's hard to work with unless you do it between centers. So the way I usually do it, I put my piece back, I glue everything together, and then I turn everything as one piece to the final finishing look that I want. Let's put some glue on this guy. Some activator on this guy. And we're done. I would use my tailstock without anything on it just to keep a little bit of pressure between them. I mean, you don't really have to do it for super glue, but force a habit. Okay, I'm gonna put a cone on my tailstock because I'm gonna use my center hole that I drilled as a center hole. That's it. Now we're ready to put a final shape to this and we're gonna call it done. Gonna go back to a spindle roughing gouge, knock off the corners. Oops. What happened? Did my glue didn't set? My glue didn't set. You see that? Everybody saw me putting glue on, right? Igor, are you using the CA just for the demo or do you use that normally when you build these? No, just for the demo. Okay, just for quickness. Yeah, I don't like using CA because uh, it's not really moisture resistant. Right. I like uh, using Type on 3 or for really anything that's got moisture in it. I'll use CA for demo, I'll use CA for finish. I, I'm not a big fan of CA glue to be honest with you. That's just my personal. Okay, I know, but I just wanted to make sure because, yeah, I think, it, the, like you said, the tight bond three would, would be the best for this. Yeah, and but, you know, it's, it's you guys not going to wait till tomorrow, right? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. All right, see, my walnut is side grain, so it's cutting really rough. I'm going to switch to a, a ball gouge to try to finish this off. Oh, so you got that side grain on there. See the difference? Beautiful. So do you want me to guys explain to you what happened on the skew? Why did it raise and cut so bad? Or you you all turned it long enough to know? All right, I guess you don't want to. Yes, please. Okay. You're gonna skew it up? When, 
the grain of the wood is parallel to going from your head stock to your tail stock. You can use tools that cut in this manner because all they do is they're peeling the layers off of your wood. When you have the wood, when the grain goes opposite, cross, you cannot use the same tools because you're peeling the wood on the, where the grain is good and then you get to the end grain and it starts fighting you and it's actually lifting your tool up. You can force it and hold it down, but then what it does, it's actually ripping the wood apart like you see it here. So if you're cutting wood that the grain goes perpendicular to your head uh, stock and tail stock, you wanna use a tool that will cut sideways. So you start from here and you, you're actually cutting away instead of trying to peel the layers up. Say if I'm gonna use the same tool, say it starts cutting good and then it starts biting and starts putting my tool away. But if I use my tool in this direction, it'll actually peel the wood pretty good. Does that make any sense? Yes. So yes. what do you agree? That's Thank one you. of the best explanations of that I've heard. Thank you so much. No problem. Is that the same angle on your bowl cows? Igor, or are you using different angles? Let me drop my tool rest a little bit, get it a little bit closer. So you can hear this. No, I made a booboo. -boo. I cut too deep, but it's okay. We can fix this. Whoops. You see that? switch to my parting tool. I'm going to cut off this little piece that on the end we don't need anymore. And we'll put some kind of final detail on this guy. Looks like we got threads on it. Character. That's right. All right, I'm gonna try to finish this with my skew. My skew skills aren't really good, so if I'm gonna screw it up, forgive me. Oh, too high. Whoops. Oh, that didn't work too well. We excuse you. Get it, skew? Yep, I got it. And that's another reason why I'm not a big fan of super glue. But you know what? This thing's got plenty of meat still left, left on it. We can actually salvage this.
I'm going to reglue this to time number three. Guys, in <laughs> work. Well, let's try this again. So let's down a bit so I can get in there. Let's speed it up a little bit. Oh, it's starting to look like something. Grab a, um, oh, why don't we go with the scraper? Get rid of all the super glue that I put on top. Turn this into a little detail. There we go. Okay. You're not paying attention. I think we're done turning. All we got left is to do is uh, send them, finish it, and make it as pretty as you like, as ugly as you like, and it's done. <sighs> Let's see if she'll actually sound. Nah, not too good. Okay. Questions, comments? I've got a question for you. Yeah. When you use that spacer, you know, when you drill in the holes for the reeds. Uh huh. God, you put in a, a space <laughs> for that spacer. Yes. I'm sorry, what was your question? What was the thickness of the spacer you used when you drilled the reeds? Three eighths. Three eighths? Yes. For, for the spacer. That's correct. Okay, thanks. You know, let me switch your camera so you guys can see me. There we go. Yeah, the spacer was three eighths of an inch. Uh, cut a piece of wood. It doesn't matter what it is as long as it's three eighths. I would think that that dimension may vary depending on your chuck jaws, possibly. Yeah, Ralph, you're right, but you also got to realize you're not making a rocket that's going to fly to space. So this if that true. thing is off by 
a 16 who cares no, that, no that's that's absolutely true we're not we're not we're not making a space shuttle here that's right this this is a kid's toy and that's all it's intended to be and believe me the first thing, the chance they'll get if they're small enough we're gonna throw it on the wall well that's a question, question. You, you give your grandkids that's right so you don't have to hear it that's right. Give it to the grandkids so that they can they can do to their parents what your what your kids did to you. Uh, exactly. How do you go about finishing the other end of it? Do you put it between centers after you've done the top part? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'll use the, the the I'll use this side for my tailstock. I'll put a live center on this side, and I'll go ahead and finish it, turn it, put the, whatever details you want on it. I usually leave that to the very last. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, can I use this trick for the off center that, that that you put the block for another uh, another things, right? Have you used it like for? You could. It's a little bit dangerous to uh, turn while you're holding your piece with only two jaws instead of four. It works really well on drilling because you have a drill bit inside your wood. And it doesn't let your piece of wood fly away. Okay. So your your chuck is intended to hold your piece with four jaws. You're holding it with only two, and it's it's not the safest thing in the world to do. Can you do okay. it? Yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely not. Better for drilling, right? So drilling works perfect. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, Rolf, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, I'll take the spotlight off. Thank you, sir. Good job. Anytime. The check's in the mail. Good All job. Right. <laughs> really, we, I really appreciated that, thank you. Oh, no problem. I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much, it was amazing, yeah. thanks. That was kind of neat. Yep. Now y'all gotta make one. There you go. <laughs> I, I actually, a few years back, I made some uh, some smaller ones, some single note. Um, uh -huh. uh, single note one here. Oh, those are those are neat. Yeah, I've made those before too. Now I'm gonna tell you something, guys. If you change the diameter of the dowel and the drill bit from a three eighths to a half inch, you get a deeper note. Yes. So the, the whole size, the bigger the hole, the deeper the, the, the notes you get. Well, that so and the depth. A freight train out of a half inch. The depth that you drill the hole also has, a, has a bearing on the tone. The tone. There was a, I can't remember where I saw these. There was an article. I think it was in the AAW magazine. Somebody was making these and they had a, a whole article on it. And it was a matter of playing, you know, like you were saying, playing with the... Uh, Playing with the um, the depth of the hole and the diameter the of depth, the hole. Playing with the depth of the hole and playing with how far you put your dowel in and how 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 thick you made that dowel. There's all different variations you can play with there. That's right. <laughs> As I said, if you have the ear for it, you can actually tune them to, to sound like a musical instrument. I mean, I'm toned up, so they all sound the same to me. If you used a, if you used a drill press so you weren't worried about drilling into your chuck, I would drill the holes all the way through and then stick the dowels out the other end too, pull those like a trombone slide until you had what you wanted. So oh, you nope. uh, there's 40 different ways to skin a cat. I just showed you how I do it. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just how I do it. I don't have a drill press big enough so I can drill this on the drill press. That's why I gotta come up with the screwy ways to do it because yeah, I don't have a drill press big enough. That wasn't crude. <laughs> Does the amount you sand off of the dowel have a effect on the tone? Uh, yes, it does. It, it's not as much because when, when you actually glue the dowels in, you play with the depth of that dowel and based on how much you sand off of it, is how either deep or shallow you have to glue the dowel in. So the, the amount of air getting through that hole actually does matter, but you control it by the depth of that uh, dowel being glued in. 
Would would uh, sanding the dowel at an angle help or hurt? No, actually, it'll actually hurt. You, you want to get that dowel pretty, the flat spot pretty straight. Who is watching TV? <laughs> <laughs> we want to see it too. Come on. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Do you have any more questions? I'm going to log off. I'm going to clean my shop and go spend some time with my kids. All right. Thanks. Thank you, you, Igor. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. That was an awesome demo. I'm glad you like it. Have a good night. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. So anybody got anything they want to uh, show that they've been working on? Yeah, yeah I've got something here. Okay. <laughs> I've been working on, uh, I just got some poinsettia that I got back. I was thinking like, just as this pandemic thing started. You know, so I did three different ways of doing it more. Uh, the first thing I want to do is <clears throat> I let it sit for a while and I don't have a bowl to show you because the woman I got the wood for, I made a bowl for. It. I don't know if you can see this. This is the poinsettia and I with all the spalting. Poinsettia. Yeah, poinsettia, whatever. I'm from the, the west side. Oh, <laughs> well, the poinsettia is a little bitty Christmas tree bushes. Yep, but you see here, it looks like a, a pattern. It looks like if you look at it close enough on it, it would look like a bird. But anyways, so that's spalting. So the first piece of wood, I cut off a limb and it was wet and I turned it. So this is what it looked like with no spalting. And it had some different shapes to it. When you turn it like this, <clears throat> it's really stringy. And almost, it reminds me of pieces of feathers that come off. But this is the... Uh, the point sienna with uh, no spalting. You can see all the different uh, grain patterns in it. And after it sat for about, oh, three, four, five months, it was really punky and there was a lot of spalting in it. And this one, I, this one, I gave her the other one. This one didn't turn out as well because I normally, I'd go back and fix these spots here. You see where the, the rot was? I'd fill them with something, but I didn't. So Kay's going to use it for a uh, flower pot. But the one thing I want to show you here, if you can see it, or maybe I can't see it. <clears throat> I don't know if, what it looks like to me here. What I'm pointing to, I don't know if you can see it. It looks like uh, right there. I'm at the bottom of it. Can you see it? There we go. Turn around like this. There you go. It looks like a hand. Can you see that? Like someone's got a hand. Yeah, I see the hand. It's somebody giving somebody the finger. No, that's not the index <laughs> finger. It's your first finger. No, the that's finger the finger you, right there. That's the finger you pick your nose with. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, oh, this, 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 different stages of poinsettia. You know, spalting oh. or no spalting. Paula, are you there? That's crazy, the, the spalting. Yep. She, oh, left. she left. She left. She was asking me about Poinciana the other day, and I was hoping she would see that. Well, well, she have to look at the recording. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I do. I got. Uh, I was practicing cutting uh, cutting air the other day, mm. and. I was just wondering what was I going to do with it, and I figured it'd be just you know waste wood and just practice. But then all of a sudden, at the end, I decided to make it into a hold it lower. Can you spotlight into it into a bell? Oh. <laughs> so I was cutting air, practicing cutting air, and just made it into a uh, into a wow. bell. 
Very good. For who the bell tolls. You know, I taught junior high school for a lot of years, and you couldn't say cutting air. <laughs> cutting air. Uh, that was pretty cheesy, Dave. Yeah. yeah, it was. And for Christmas, I got a, some Halloween tools, so I went Ooh. to ah. Hollow, and I played the... Uh, Kind of looks sort of like an egg. I don't know what we'll call it later, what it is, but um, use some myelin finish on it. Oh, there we go. Put the thing big. Got uh, a hole in it. Big hole in it. And the sides also got some cracks because it's a uh, crotch piece of uh, tropical almond. So it has oh. some nice, mm -hmm. some nice green uh, flowing around it. Did any of the colors stay with it? You know, it, when you first cut it, you see some yellow, blue, green, but it doesn't look like any of the colors stayed there. No, it was, it was very pink. Pink? Very pink all the way through. I got it, uh, I got the limb from my neighbor's uh, trash pile, probably at the beginning of the pandemic, hmm. somewhere around there. <laughs> and Christmas this year, we're a whole bunch of uh, snowmen, all shapes, sizes, and Stuff like that. This is actually some laminated cedar planks. So you can see the different layers of it there. Um, just a whole bunch of these I made and gave out for Christmas. That's Very it. good. Good. Anybody else? Yeah, I got something. Hello. Hello. So uh, what I got here is a little uh, ornament that I made. Uh, so this is a little piece of spalded uh, scrap. That, uh, so uh, I think this little base is mahogany. And I've seen them with uh, little chains or something, but I used uh, toothpicks on it. Uh, so in order to and it is hollow, so uh, you know, I turned it and then uh, drilled a one-inch hole and then uh, hollowed it out. Uh, so I used uh, toothpicks uh, up here. In order to line it up, I turned a, a little ring here and put the ring down on, held it on the, the base and then drilled the four holes, then stuck the toothpicks in and slid the ring up and glued it in place. <clears throat> that made it a whole lot easier rather than to try to to drill into the, this piece and, and, and fit it. It was a whole lot easier fitting it in. So that's what I did. So you can fly away now. Yep. Okay. Oh. Hey, Ralph, I have some pens that I've been turning to show. Well, let's see them. So I, I, after the resin demo, I started experimenting with the, some of the resin scraps I had and I was been turning some pens. And this is like hybrid scraps from other turnings. And um, as you can tell, it looks like, you know, ocean or blue, but it has white underneath. I had to paint the tube. And this is kind of like what we were talking about last time, how important it is to paint either the barrel inside the, the blank or the, the brass tubing. Right. So you don't have anything peek through with resin. And also I, I've been using up some of the scraps of skateboard wood that I have, uh, making uh, these uh, laminated skateboard pens. So I've done two orientations. I did uh, basically this orientation where it's long ways, I guess, like the skateboard would normally travel. Right. And then these that are stacked. This one was really cool because it was pre-laminated from where I got them. So it has like a nice little angle going through it. And the, the, the skateboard, I guess it's the orientation of the grain, has a little bit of chatoyance in the reflection. It's kind of hard to translate through this camera. Right. But uh, it's pretty neat. It's just some slimline pens that I've been messing with and making. Uh, Dave has been helping me with the pen turning. And I've been making like little keychains and stuff out of scrap resin that I have left over. So that way nothing is wasted in, from the castings. How about your uh, beer can crusher? You were going to show us that. 
Oh yeah, the the tip about the pen assembly tool. So um, I, I can go get it, but just to give you a little explainer. So I've been using the Milescraft uh, pen assembly tool, but instead of setting it up like they sort of tell you in the instructions, I've been setting it up um, vertically. So when you go to assemble your pen, instead of worrying about your thing sliding around the table or clamping it down, or having to hold it with two hands, you can align it visually from both sides without you know, struggling, and you just pull your handle straight down. So the leverage is more, uh, more natural, yeah, more like the way gravity works. So uh, I've been messing with that. I could go grab it from the shop while somebody else shows off what they got, and then I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys the way it looks. Well, the reason I said that is when Ozzy told me that, it reminded me back in the day, when um, you used to sell aluminum, save aluminum cans from beer or soda or whatever, and you'd crush them flat and take them to the recycle. So they had this beer crushing device that you'd screw it on a wall or somewhere, put your beer can in there and pull it down and it'd be flat. The can be flat and you get more in a bag and sell them. I remember uh, that, yep. but I used it for soda, not beer. I was well, too I, I said beer or soda. This is back in the back in back in the seventies, so you wouldn't know about beer back then. Yeah, I, yeah, I was I was telling Dave that my shop teacher and Robert Morgan actually would make us crush cans for him with one of those <laughs> machines. But, well, but I, I have a can crusher next to the refrigerator. There you go. See, it's Except basically I don't this drink the beer tool. anymore. Um, it's basically this tool from them. Uh, you can kind of see it there. But again, normally it's used in this orientation. And I look at these guys on YouTube struggling with it. And I'm like, this has got to be a better way to do it. So I had a board already hanging on the wall from another tool that I kind of took off. And you're basically, all you're doing is this maneuver. And it's almost no effort whatsoever. And you're able to really line up everything by eye perfectly. I, I have a commission to do like 15 pens. So I was like, I got to find the fastest way to do it. So I... That's the reason I went this route. <laughs> Very good. You've, you've come a long way, Ozzy, from that first uh, uh, workshop that you came to and showed you how to make something. Yep. Yeah, well, thanks to all the help, uh, especially from Dave and Ralph and all of you in the club. Uh, I've gotten a lot of help, even from some that might not know, because I watched all the YouTube videos from before I joined the club to get tips and stuff. <laughs> but back to painting the, painting the tubes again. Another way I've seen people do it, I found it easier to paint the tube, is they take a, a, a cotton a, a ear swab and they put paint on that and they just put that in the, t in the barrel the the blank instead of the tube so it's either way you can either do the tube or just do the inside of the blank anybody else all right well i got a couple of little things you saw the little uh single note whistles that i made i made a, a bunch of different ones, uh, different shapes. These are made out of some uh, maple that I had, maple or sycamore, I'm not sure. It was from an actual cutting board uh, I took out of a house from in the gables that was built back in the 30s. They used to have slide-in cutting boards underneath the countertop. So then I've got another thing here, which I had a, a student come by for, some turning lessons and it kind of turned out that she wanted me to make something for her. So uh, she gave me this drawing and it's kind of crazy looking on the drawing. It's a picture of something. Uh, uh, well, you can, it's very strange looking at the top. Uh, it almost looks like some kind of animal with these bulging eyes, but it's actually uh, a lid and it has four balls recessed into the lid. Oh. Um, so from the top, it looks, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, 
it looked kind of like that from the top. Okay, so I got started on it and this is the actual piece. Okay. And the lid comes off and what I've got to do now is turn four recesses off center to hold the uh, four balls. I started making the balls today, which I just did by hand. Uh, so they're not perfect, perfect. And these, I've got to re, that one's kind of eggy, eggy shape until I straighten it out between centers. Um, and those will go into recesses up in here. And I don't know if I'm going to have to pin them or glue them or exactly how this thing is going to work. But, uh, and then I, I, I sent the lady a text this afternoon showing her where I had gotten so far. And she, she, she sent me a text back saying, uh, let me see what she says here. She says, oh good, I have blueprints for different sizes for you to make. I'm like, oh great, just what I wanted to do. <laughs> so we're gonna to have to discuss some finances here. So that's pretty much uh, all I've got to show. Um, I don't know if, I think it did end up, I don't know if it ended up on the Guild Facebook or not. Uh, Tiffany came by the other day and we made a salt box. You saw it, right, Brian? Yeah, okay. I was there. Okay. It was so, out yeah, there somewhere. That's, uh, that's a nice little project to make with a swivel lid. Uh, I've got magnets on order. Um, so that'll be a project down the road that uh, we may end up doing a demo on, depending Is on- Is that the, rare uh, earth magnets? Yes. Are you using the magnets as hinges? I I didn't on this one. Uh, I did see a video of a guy using the magnet for the actual hinge. Mm. Uh, I did a, a I did a two tiered version of one, and I did that with uh, with magnets. And the person I gave it to was my nephew. who was really into cooking. He actually got it to open all three, the lid and the two sections, and stay with the magnets. Okay. And like he would, yeah, and he would open it, and all three things were open. It was the coolest thing. I didn't think it would work that way, but it's a it's a neat idea to use the magnets as hinges. The, which kind? Of, which magnets did you get? The 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 ones that are um, magnetic longitudinally, or? Uh, I just I'll be honest. I got the like I think they're quarter inch uh rare earth magnets from amazon they were nothing i didn't even pay attention to what which way they oh which magnetized. way the polarity was yeah i didn't i didn't what i did is to sort of line up the holes is i use um those little um you use them for cabinet making when you want to line up dowels uh on shelves and stuff like that they they look like little spikes that you put in the hole you drill right so I, right so i would drill the hole on the first one put the little spike in line everything up, hammer it in, and that would transfer the hole all the way up. And then I just stacked the magnets. I did double them. I put like, in each level, there was four magnets. Okay. I I, I, I have a picture, but if not, I could share it later. It, it looks pretty neat. I was, I was very surprised how it came out. Sounds like interesting. It, yeah, yeah, it was neat. So, sounds like a possible demo. In the in the future, yeah, I, I could do it. It I made it out of a giant block of sapelli. Okay, it, it was pretty neat. Well, the one the one that we did was used. Uh, I used a, a brass pin, which is that was used a, a brazing rod uh, for the hinge, and then we're going to use a magnet for the you know to keep it closed. Um. And of course, we just the, the, the easiest way to get everything to line up properly is just drill all the way through. Yeah. 
And then I don't know if you noticed, anybody noticed if they looked at the picture good, um, where the magnet is going to go. What we did is we put a plug of a contrasting wood in the top to cover the hole. And that also tells you where the, where the magnet is. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it was a smaller hole too, wasn't it? One was smaller than the other. Right, the, the actual hinge was this diameter of the brazing rod, which is three thirty seconds. Mm -hmm. And what I what I did is that the brazing rod, and this wasn't intentional, but it would be in the future, is um, the melted end kind of has a little bit of a, a ball effect to it. You know, when you stop using it for brazing, it has a little bit of a, a ball on the end. Mm -hmm which is a little bit larger in diameter. So you gently tap it in and then you place your lid back in place, get everything lined up and then you finish sanding the whole top of the lid. And of course that sands it down flush and it gives you a nice little brass dot. You know, you could use a larger diameter one if you wanted. Um, the one guy that I saw use that used the magnet for the hinge, he drilled all the way through, of course, to get his lined up. And, but he did it with a pilot bit with a 16th inch drill bit. And you could, you know, depending, you could just take a drop of CA and a little bit of sawdust and stick it in that hole. And you'd never see the darn thing from the top if you didn't want to see it. And what he did is he got a long, a long magnet. It was quarter inch diameter by, um, I'm not sure how long the actual magnet was, but you know, he, he made the magnet extend down from the lid where it went into the hole in the body of the box. And then he had a magnet down below that even deeper in the box, so. But I haven't been able to find that video for some reason. I saw the one and uh, I haven't found that exact one. Been able to, for some reason, it won't come back up. But um, there's, a, you know, there's a whole bunch of different videos on making salt boxes. But that's what they call them. You don't have to use them for salt. You can use them for whatever you want. That's just a swivel lid box. Oh yeah. You know, I don't know if the rest of you are aware, but if an Ozzy's picture, if you look and put that picture back up, Ozzy, if you would, you see the three dots to the right of Ozzy. If you select that, you'll see pin video. And what it'll do is it'll bring that picture right to you, unless Ralph has got it on spotlighting. Yeah, I put it on spotlight. Okay. Now I can't hear you. Was there something wrong with your, are you muted? Oh, sorry. I had my microphone off. Uh, sorry about that. What I meant to say is um, I, I found the picture. So the magnets I did not cover up because they're not really visible until you open it, but right. you can do, you could do what you were saying, but see how uh, I didn't think you could get it to balance like the way he did it. And what he's, he's, you know, he's like a amateur chef, I guess. So what he would do is put salt and then like some sort of other seasoning on top. Okay. And um, I didn't put a lip on the boxes. I did put a lip on the lid. So when it goes in, it would line up in there instead of uh, sort of sliding around. Uh, okay. Phone turned off. But um, this was this was my first time I made, was trying to make an attempt to do that. But like I said, I just used regular magnets. Um, and I didn't drill all the way through. I, I yeah. lined, every, lined everything up with... Uh, with those little dot, the little spikes. Right. Well, as long as you get it lined up, but you know, lining that stuff up can be a pain in the neck. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's and ways you, around it. And you have um, to make sure your polarity is right on the magnet. That's yes, the, before you glue them. Yeah. So I learned a trick with that is what I would do is uh, I wanted to keep the magnets together. So I would put a piece of, tape in between the two magnets and let them magnetize. So then I could glue one in 
uh, to, to one side, the glue wouldn't stick to the other magnet. And then I could take the tape off or I could leave the tape on and glue it to the other. And basically the magnets would stay together and the glue wouldn't stick them together permanently or, or dirty the thing. I mean, you could sand it or whatever, but it, that's right. how I kept them from doing anything weird on me and screwing up the polarity. Now you can also get uh, black magnets. Really? I yeah. Know yeah. There's a, uh, um, where I got, I've got magnets on order. You know, Tiffany wanted to make a few more boxes and I want to make a few more. So I ordered some magnets. And when I was on there, there's a company called K and J magnetic or magnets. And as I was looking through the catalog online, I'm like, oh, they have these in black nickel instead of the, instead of the regular nickel plate, these are black nickel. So I said, well, that ought to be just right for a dark wood. So I ordered some of those and they're not, you know, they're not, I ordered 40 magnets and it was like uh, under $18. That's really good to know. What was the company called again? K and J. K and J. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a, a, a link to it. Yeah, I use magnets on my bottle openers that I turned that look like hockey pucks. I don't know. If, was, oh, yeah, yes, you guys have seen them. It was the first thing I ever turned that when I went to the club that I showed off. Uh, so it keeps the cap in, and you can attach it to the fridge. Okay. And uh, that would actually be really cool to have a a sort of magnet that's less visible. You know, for that something like that. Yeah, they've got a, a good a good website. They've got different strength ones too, different strength magnets. So I'll I'll when I when I send the uh, link out for the YouTube for this video that we're making tonight, I'll, I'll include that uh, website for them. Thank you very much. So. So anybody got anything else? Well, I guess not. So if nobody's got anything else to share or say, earning related that is, then uh, I guess we'll see you guys at the next one, uh, the Saturday workshop uh, coming up on the 16th, I think. And, and Brian's reminding us to send the pictures for the news. Send the pictures to Brian. Yep. <laughs> by we, by Wednesday or so. Wednesday, yeah. I missed last time, so yes. So Wednesday Definitely the thirteenth. <laughs> yep. Send the pictures to Brian. Yep, and it is the sixteenth for the workshop. Sixteenth for the workshop. Uh. Don't know what we'll do. We'll do something. If somebody wants to do something or if somebody wants to come down to my shop and do something or if somebody wants to whatever or I'll do something so uh, I would like to see how you do the the holes for the little balls on that on that lid of that uh, art project you're working on yeah that's I'm thinking of a couple of different different ways to do it because I'm not sure if I want to go uh i'm not sure i've got to think about this um i'm not sure if i want to go straight in or if i want to come in at an angle yeah so and of course obviously they're offset equal spaced around the the thing so um you know, if I you come know, straight straight in from the top, like straight down, I can I can do that on the drill press. Mm. Uh, you know, depending on how big the hole needs to be, it needs to be obviously a hemisphere. Uh, 
You use a round router bit? Huh? Yeah, a um, a box, a box. What the hell do yeah. you call it? A box. A box bit four box like bin. Yeah. Yeah. If I, I don't know if I have the right size, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. These balls are going to be about an inch and a quarter in diameter. So, uh, you know, the other option would be, and, eat, and you know, I can do it either way. Um, whether I came straight in or if I came in an angle, if I, I could use that uh, donut chuck that I made last them last Saturday workshop. Uh, I could use the donut chuck and mount the this lid in there, obviously off center, and I'd have to make a shim. Okay, for the uh, for the bottom for the bottom to sit in. At an angle, so I'd have to sit in there at an angle so that wherever my place is, is, is of course coming straight into the tailstock. And then I'd have to, you know, be able to rotate it all the way around to get the uh, right spacing. It's going to be a little tricky. So, you know, oh, sorry. What, what if you see so you've got a tenon on the bottom of that? What if you cut a wedge and drilled a hole in it? the size of that tenon and then put it on your drill press and just spin it around to the four different positions. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's exactly what has to be done. If I can, if I can do, if I can drill it on the drill press and get an appropriate hole, otherwise I'll have to turn it, you know, just like, uh, you know, turn a hemisphere in there, just like, uh, you know, Igor did with the inside of the air chamber there or turn it in, you know, just like you do on a salt box. That's the one thing about these salt boxes. I don't know if anybody noticed that you don't make a straight right. side, straight wall with a flat bottom like a regular box. You want a, a hemisphere box. That way the stuff goes to the center when you go to pick it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it, it needs to pretty, pretty closely match the radius of this ball Unless Al, I glue these in. Another way you could do it is if you took a spade bit and ground it to the shape of those balls. Yep. And then use that to, you know, cut your hollow in there. Yeah, that would that would That's a great too. idea. <laughs> Just make a that dedicated bit, which would be the same thing as a router bit, but yeah. you know, a lot a lot cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a lot cheaper. That's a genius idea. Good idea, uh, David. Thank you. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? That picture you showed, uh, similar to um, one of them furniture table legs that looks like it's a claw grabbing a ball. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Even, even something like out of green and green furniture, which is, right. uh, which they have a bunch of uh, ball and claw. Normal, but they have yes. They have ball and claw stuff. is what it's called. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. I, I, very cool looking, very 70s. I'm well, not calling anybody old. The, the, <laughs> I was told by the woman that brought me this picture that uh, this is supposedly, this thing is was made out of, this is from Colombia and it's made out of gold and it's for some kind of uh, ritual doing with uh, cocaine. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, that reminds me, I sold a box, one of the resin boxes that I did that I sold. I ended up finding out later the, per, the person that bought it wanted it to put as a stash box. Of for course. Her, for, yeah, for her pot. I was like, okay. <laughs> hey, you know, I don't care. Yeah. Whatever you want to use it for. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've made some pipes that I've sold, and the people say, "Oh, is this for? It's for whatever you want it for." And I don't care what you do with it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's such. That's so funny. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave. But great job! Thank you again. Yeah. All right. 
We'll see you Thank all. you, guys. Thanks, Happy everybody, New for Year. showing up. Happy New Year and stay healthy. Yeah, stay healthy, guys. We'll uh, yep. see you Happy all. New Bye. Hey, stay safe. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night, Bye. folks.